Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome to my studio. Today I have a treat for you. I found these at Indie Jam. I wasn't really sure what to do with them. They look kind of like toys to me. They're these little embossed cutters. They were something I really wasn't too sure about. I absolutely fell in love with them. These are a peacock shape and you can do so much with them. I really think they're interesting because if you have no experience with clay, this is what's going to give you that experience with clay. And these actually are designed for clay and they are designed to work really easily. And so there's a whole bunch of different cutters that Ojoy has on her site. Now to create these samples, this is done with black clay and gold leaf. This one's done with pearl clay and silver leaf. It's the exact same technique. I'm going to use the black clay just because it photographs easier. I have some black clay and this is just a piece of paper so it doesn't adhere to it. I have a glass top table. I don't want the clay to stick to my table. It's just easier to leave it on a piece of paper. I'm just going to slide off my gold leaf and press it onto my clay. This is on a number one on my pasta machine. The thickest setting is a zero, so it's one down from my thickest setting. To bat, we're going to put two pieces together, so it's going to make it a thicker bead anyway, so if it's a little thinner, it would be okay, just as long as you have two pieces and that it gives you a nice solid piece when they're together. Now because I don't want any of this gold leaf in my black clay, I keep my black clay with gold leaf separate. It's very pretty. I just like to have some clay that's plain. I prefer to take a cutter and cut around where I'm going to do this. Well, if I didn't have the gold leaf on the clay, I would spray this down with water, but I'll do it out of habit anyway. This is just a spray bottle, and this is just regular plain water. It would keep the clay from sticking to my cutter, and I find that these cutters work much better when you press them in like you would a mold. They're sort of a cross between a mold and a cutter. That way I get the impression nice and thick in there. If you just try to cut it, pressing it down like this, I don't find you get as nice of an impression. I find pressing it in, you get a perfect impression. I haven't had one bad one doing it this way. And as you can see, it just presses itself right into a cut, so you don't have to do much. And now I'll just take my needle tool right at the end here and it will start to pop right out where that end is. That little tail for the feather, I was not able to get this little piece out, but it was a great little spot for me to put my needle in. And now I'm just going to take an X-Acto knife and just trim that out a little bit. So you can clean off all those edges. But you can see you have a beautiful impression there. And now I'll just cut out a few more. We're going to need four in total to do each bead. So you need the reverse of each one and when you buy this you get the reverse as it's part of a set. You get the mirrored image so that you, when you sandwich them together you'll have that imprint on both sides. And you'll notice when you push this in that you'll start to get an imprint in the back of it. Then you know you've got it pushed in all the way. And So just keep pushing it for a minute. And then I just take a needle tool and pop this right out. And you can see I got another perfect impression. I love the way the leaf crackles and shows that little black through there. I think it's really neat. So now I can take the two and glue them together. And even though they're wet clay, I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid clay in the middle there, just for my insurance. You really don't need it. It's always nice to know that they're going to be nice and tightly sealed. I don't want to spend all my time making a beautiful earring and then have it fall apart because it, it wasn't glued together enough. I didn't press it enough. You can't really press this too much because you don't want to lose this impression. So that's why I prefer to put the liquid clay in between. And now I'll just take, you can take your fingernail or a little blender tool and blend that seam. Now if you don't like the seam, you can put some gold leaf on it. I kind of like the seam because it fades into this black in the middle. I think that's really a pretty contrast with the front of the earring. But up to you, it's your set. If that bothers you, put some gold leaf on it. But just spend a little time blending this all together. 
and there we go. Now you can see how I've got that thickness added to that bead. I will make another one so I have a pair of earrings. Now in order to achieve this effect, this one is silver leaf with white pearl clay, and this one is black clay with gold leaf, and they almost look the same. So it really doesn't matter if you have gold or silver leaf. With this technique, I've noticed that it almost comes out the same, and that's what I wanted to show you here. Now, all I'm using is some alcohol ink. Here we've got some citrus one. You can use any brand of alcohol ink, it doesn't matter. And you can use any color you like. I'm just using this green because it's what I did in the previous one. And I'm just putting it around the piece. Now, you don't have to get it in every section because I'm going to take a brush and spread it. So I'm just taking a regular little paintbrush and spreading that ink around. And now I'm going to take a little bit of the blue ink. This is Sailboat Blue from Tim Holtz, but it doesn't matter what brand you have. And I'm just going to put a drop into that second well around the feather. And I'll just blot my brush off in between. And you can see how it just runs right out there. Well, I wanna drag it up a little bit here. You have more control when you just drag it with the brush. Now the colors are a little brighter on the silver leaf, but I just wanted to show you, they're so similar. And here I've got some cranberry. This one has a tendency to pour out, so I'm just going to put a little dab on my brush, and then work from that. For some reason, the, the pour on this bottle is crazy. It's already ruined a couple pieces when I've tried to make a drop out of it. And you may have more control just putting this in a pan and working off of it, or if you have a glass surface, you can put it right on your glass surface and work off of it. Now, I like the way the alcohol runs into the other colors and sometimes it takes over and has a randomness to it. But you can see the black one, which is the gold over here, and the silver one looks super similar once we get them colored. Now, the one thing I have learned the hard way not to do is I put UV resin on top of these, but wait until they dry thoroughly. Because if they're not dry and you do this right away, this is what happens. You see how it just spread like that? It was supposed to look like this, and instead it ran like that. And that was because, and it did it on both of them, I put the resin on right away when I was filming. I was trying to rush it rather than letting it dry, and it just turned into a mess. So in order to avoid that mess, and I'll show it to you on the white, same problem. I was doing the same four like this. I went and brushed putting the resin on, and the resin sort of eats away at the alcohol ink and creates this mess. If you let them dry thoroughly and then put your resin on and cure it, you can see you get a perfect finish. And all I did was use some Japanese resin. You can use Lisa Pavelka's Magic Gloss, and that will give you this super reflective glass-like look on top of this. Now once I've got these covered with resin, I haven't baked them yet, I will take my needle tool and skewer through these before I bake them. So I have my needle tool through there. I've got it in the spot that I want it. There's a lot more forgiveness when you do this with the wet clay, and that this is the one that messed up on the one side, but I just I can still show you. So this is how I get my needle tool in and out. Just put it in, and I skewer them before I bake them. And then once I bake them, I don't have to glaze them or anything. They already have the resin on them. Now you don't need to leave your skewer in. The clay does not change during baking, so it will remain the same. I find that they become very difficult to get out once you bake them in there. I just prefer to bake them without the, without the skewer, just a lot easier. So I'll bake these according to manufacturer's directions and then you have a perfect bead to work with. And here is that same technique done with gold leaf, alcohol ink, and resin. And it's really beautiful because you can get it on both sides. And they look 
like they'd be big and bulky, but they're actually really light. Now once again, we're using the gold leaf in the back with some alcohol inks and some resin, and these I did some bead embroidery around, so they just look a little different. Instead of doing them double layered so that I could bead through them, I did them a single layer and used them as a cabochon. And then used them as a cabochon once again. This was just some gold leaf and some alcohol ink. And these I also created as a single layer so that there's only one side on them. Almost like an antique kind of a look. And here's my favorite one. Cutter. And then I created this necklace. I always have to get a little bit more bead embroidery in there so it matches the earrings once again with the silver leaf and some alcohol ink and some UV resin. I also did some bead embroidery around it, some fringe, just to switch it up a bit, just to show you that you can do all sorts of things. Now to create these, I've just got some white pearl clay, I've got some water. And I've got both of my smaller mirrored image pieces. My, I'm just going to spray my little cutter and then I'm going to put my clay on top. Now this clay is done on a number one on my pasta machine and a zero is the thickest setting. So you have to adjust it. Each pasta machine is a little different. So you do one or two and see how you like them and it, you can go thinner from there. Now I'm just pressing this in so I get that nice embossing and this way it cuts that edge as you can see as I'm working. So when I pull it off I get a nice little cut and I like to take my needle tool. I find that this little stem at the end is almost impossible to pull out. I find it just easier to pull out with my needle tool and if you want the opposite direction do the exact same thing. I also like to take a little exacto blade and just clean around the edges. This only takes a second just to get that extra clay. Now you can decorate this before or after you put them together, but they basically go one on top of the other. I'm just going to put a little bit of this pearl clay. This is just some Sculpey liquid clay and it's white pearl so it matches perfectly, but it doesn't really matter what color it is. You're not going to see it. If you're wondering why I put that in the middle there, it's because I'm not really squishing this together enough for there to be really good contact in the clay there. And this way I know my pieces won't fall apart. Now you can take a blender or your finger and just blend these seams together or press them together. Up to you. Sometimes I just take a pencil eraser. Pencil eraser is my best friend, but I'm just going to use this blending tool. And see how they separate a little bit? That's why that liquid clay is nice that it sits in there. And if it sits for an hour or two, it'll start to bond the pieces together without even baking them. They will become one solid. So that is how I create my nice solid bead. And now you just have to decorate it on either side. Now I have all these pieces put together enough to make a bracelet or a pair of earrings, whatever you want to make. I just figured I'd do a bunch. I always like to do a bunch at the same time. And I have lots of ways you can color these. Of course you can use paint. I also have pan pastels. These are like a thicker than a normal chalk paint. They're water soluble. They're quite unique. I wish they came in a smaller size. They only come in this large almost a three inch canister so it makes them very expensive but if you're into doing watercolors and stamping then you'll like this. They also make a cool treatment on top of clay. I also like to use eyeshadows. I like to use these colors that I would probably never use on my eyes. They work great with polymer clay so I always keep these kits that have those extra colors. You can get them this holiday time of the year. I also love these um, mica pigment powders and Pearlex is of course the easiest one to get. Creative Art which is Jet H Studio. You could get these on Etsy. These are my favorite because they're a little bit more sparkly than the Pearlex, but any of these will look wonderful. I honestly don't even remember which one I used on this, but I don't want to do these colors anyway because I already have a selection of jewelry made with these colors. So we'll do something else. I'm going to use these creative art pigments just because I really like this blue and purple color. I don't have anything in these. I've done all the pinks 
and greens. I love the purple and the blue. Now I use a dry brush when I start with this. I don't use water or any liquids. And wherever you put this powder, it will not another color will not stick on top of it. So just get used to the fact that don't put product where you don't want color because you can't really release taking it off. And so I'm just going to go around and add to the center this purpley color. I like the way it looks and I want to add the vein to that part of the feather that bleeds out to the eye. And I probably should add around that little eye of the feather because I want to add some rhinestones to these just like I did the other ones. I want to show you how I add my rhinestones. So for this I only need two colors. You can use three, you can use five, use as many colors as you like. Because I'm adding the rhinestones, I don't feel I need as many colors. I think the simplicity makes it look more elegant. But this is your design. Do what makes you happy. Colors, I just wipe my brush off on a tissue and make sure I get all that loose powder off. And I'm thinking this of two blues. I think this greener blue might be prettier. I was going to use this darker blue, but now that I see this has come up more blue than purple, I want a little bit more of the teal base to this. Now very easy, you can just go right around that blue and let it fade out. Because I'm not going to do the sides of my beads, I like that pearl on the sides. If you want, you could use scrap clay and cover the whole piece in your mica powder, but I like that fade. And the way to get it is just add it right at the center there and then let it come off the brush and just use whatever is left on your brush for the edge. Now make sure you let all of the water dry first before doing this process because otherwise this will not adhere. You want the clay to be perfectly dry so that the stickiness of the clay grabs the mica powder. And you can see what a difference that has made with that simple pearl clay just adding that big luster to it. To adhere the rhinestones I'm going to use some clear liquid polymer clay. This one is the Kato Poly Clay. You can use also the translucent Sculpey. Whatever one you have that's the best one. I'm going to put a little dot in the center and do a little circle around the eye of the feather. Now I have some tiny rhinestones. These are ABs from Tiny Pandora. This is the mixed size package. She also has ones that are individual smaller sizes. I actually like the smaller size one better but this is the one I bought and it's not bad, it's just, it takes me a little while to separate them. And I'm just going to put the larger stone in the center and make sure it's really buried into your clay. Make sure that there's some clay coming around the rhinestone and I'm going to take some smaller stones in here and these are very assorted sizes. And I'm just going to go all around that eye of the peacock feather. And now I'm just going to take my brush, and I, use, I like to use the brush back, a pen, anything to push those rhinestones in. Now I only put the rhinestones on one side because if I use these in earrings, you're only going to really see the rhinestones in one side. If I use them in a bracelet, you're only going to see the one side. So I don't put the rhinestones in on the back. So here you can see I've got the rhinestones really set in and if you notice there's lots of little liquid clay surrounding those rhinestones. And I will put the color on the back of the clay just the same as I did the front. I will skewer these from side to side. That way I can use them differently. If you want to use them as earrings I use them with the fringe this way. But for the bracelet, that they go through this way. So that this is how I string it together. Rather than straight up and down where they would be spinning, this keeps them from spinning. So I will add the color to the other side and then bake these according to manufacturer's directions. Now here I have all my little peacock feathers baked and you can see I've got 
a little bit of a larger rhinestone in these than I did in the bracelet. It doesn't matter what size stone you have, just as long as you're happy with the way it looks. And I'm going to take some sealant to put on top of this, otherwise this mica powder will just rub off, especially on the back. And what I like to use is the Tiny Pandora Super Matte Sealer. I like the contrast of the matte next to the shiny with the rhinestones. If you want something shiny, put something shiny on it. It's all up to you, but once you seal this, it will hold that nicely in there. Now make sure you stir it very well before you use it because otherwise you will just get that shiny varnish. The matte is all on the bottom. You just need to paint it all around your stones. I do not go over my stones. So I'll take a smaller brush and just go around the center stones here. I prefer not to cover my stones in my glaze. You can, it won't hurt them, but if you have a thicker glaze it can take some of the cuts away making them appear less sparkly. Now I'll let these dry and then I'll paint the other side and let them dry before I will use them in my finished project. Here's just some pearl clay and I put some mica powder on top with my liquid clay and put some rhinestones in with some liquid clay and you can see how beautiful these look. They look like they took me hours, don't they? Here's some lavender clay and then I just put some mica powder on top and once again the same technique with some glitter and some liquid clay. Here's just some black clay and some mica powder on top once again and some rhinestones. Really impressive looking. They look like they took me forever and they didn't. And here is another pair done with the mica powder and the rhinestones. So you can do them in any color you can imagine. Now these I did put some resin on top just to make them extra shiny. Now here's just a pair of matte finish earrings that I did a watercolor tip of finish on with some rhinestones in the middle. And I added some glitter to my liquid clay so that it just gave an interesting little look with some rhinestones in the center. And I like the way you have the reverse effect so you can have them go either way and they will be opposite of each other. The mirrored effect is really nice in earrings and some pearl clay with just some mica powder on top and rhinestones. Look at how beautiful they are. I love this peacock design. It really talks to me. But if you're like me and you want that extra fringe, you can also make this as a bead and bead around it and add some fringe. Could have done this with the bead embroidery also, but I just wanted to show you different alternatives. And I love fringe, so I always have to add it to at least one piece. Here's a bracelet that I made, and I finished them on both sides. I just put the rhinestone on one side because you didn't want the rhinestone on scratchy on the other side. Not that it's really scratchy, but I just want to show you how it fits and how you get all that sparkle. So you can create any kind of a bead. If you're not into jewelry, these are just little tags. I like to reuse our Christmas tags every year. I put our names on them, and then I just put them on other gift bags. It's the same ones that my family uses for each other, so it's always nice. And you can just take a magic marker and put it on the back, and this way you can use it as an ornament keepsake or a tag, whatever is best for you. So I have two girls. I did two girl colors and one for my husband. And this was just layering up the large one and the two smaller ones. And then I created a Christmas ball. But I just want to give you ideas of what you can do with this beautiful little cutter. I was really surprised with how versatile this cutter set was. And I have one last item. I'm not done yet. And my last item is this was a artichoke jar. So it's a pretty big jar as you can see my hand is on it. It's a perfect little vase, just something that I've taken out of the recycle bin. Would have been just tossed and I put some gold leaf on top. I just did some little scratch marks with a pencil and a stamp at the top. So I had three different textures and then I just put those peacock feathers right on top of that. So you can see how you can get all this beautiful texture and design 
just from working with anything that you have around the house. And these make or these green ones because these really show perspective and size. See how small these are when you put them up against the body? They're not as large as they looked in the camera. And here's the fringe ones just to give you an idea. And this one I love because it's super versatile. So I hope I gave you lots of ideas and inspiration and thanks for watching.